Listen, if being on the left means supporting this, then I'm not on the left and I'm okay with that. So let me give you the details of the case. It doesn't mean that. Okay, I don't know. Let me Joy give you the Behar's details. On the left. We're all on the left. We don't want people dismembering folks getting released. Only a couple some of do. lunatic some act do. Some no, do. I know. I was going to what I was in the middle of saying is only a couple of lunatic activists yeah. are like, yeah, we're pro dismemberment guys being let go. Yeah, come like, at me. Come at me right now and tell me I'm the bad guy because I want these people who dismembered corpses and tried to conceal the evidence in prison. Come at me and tell me I'm the bad guy. Come at me. I I don't, look, I don't, look guys. Insane, you guys are insane. Anyone who thinks this is okay is insane. All right, folks, so as many of you know, over the past year, we have been following the transformation of Young Turks co-host Anna Kasparian. And this has been a situation where she has started to call out the left. It seems like some of her opinions are shifting. And frankly, I find it to be very fascinating because I think in any of these cases of disaffected liberals, whether it's Anna Kasparian, Bill Maher, maybe you could say Dave Rubin about a decade ago, I think the big question is always, is this truly an ideological transformation? Are they waking up from the foundations of what they once believed and saying, hey, maybe this is wrong? Or is it a situation where it's kind of just a reaction to the moment? Yeah, I don't agree with the new woke of the left, but at one's ideological core, you're still sort of a stubborn liberal. And I think in the case of Bill Maher, this is very true. But as I'll show you later in the video here today, I don't know if that's necessarily the case with Anna Kasparian. Yes, in many different moments, one could say if they're a conservative, that it's a little bit overhyped. Hey, Anna Kasparian is just out here, you know, speaking common sense. Why are you giving a host of the Young Turks, one of the most progressive news outlets out there, so much praise? and credit, but as you'll see at the end of this video, there actually may be some evidence that no, she is slightly becoming a little bit more right wing actually in just her pure belief structure. And she certainly still has a lot of work to go. But again, I'll just say I find it to be very interesting. We like to chronicle this because over the past month, to be precise, Anna has said a couple things. Some of them you could say, yes, just anti woke or maybe quote unquote common sense. Other things a little bit more interesting. So let's just get started here today. So the first recent Anna Kasparian segment that has a lot of conservatives buzzing has to do with that Nancy Pelosi interview with Katie Turr. Now, if you did not see this, Nancy essentially embarrassed herself because she went out there trying to say Biden's economy is so good. And actually, Trump crashed the economy. Actually, Trump lost a bunch of jobs when he was president. And Katie Turr, who herself is an MSNBC host, you know, she is very liberal. She's very anti-Trump. Just throws in a little bit of a clarifying comment or question, essentially saying, yeah, but COVID was a thing, right? If you want to talk about the Trump economy and how by the end it crashed, you're ignoring the fact that there was this global pandemic, as we like to call it. And Anna Kasparian actually calls that out. Check out the clip. Donald Trump is a great threat to our democracy. What is a democracy? What are the pillars? What are the pillars? A free and independent press to tell the story of what's going on, to keep everybody informed. Donald Trump has the worst record of job loss of any president. So we just have to make sure people know. That was a global pandemic. He had the worst record of any president. We've had other concerns in our country. If you wanna be an apologist for Donald Trump, that, that may be your role. You just witnessed Nancy Pelosi display, proudly display her, her hypocrisy in the context of the same interview, the same conversation within three minutes. <laughs> that was incredible. She goes from fear mongering about Donald Trump and his lack of respect for freedom of the press, and then goes on to accuse an anchor at MSNBC, Katie Torr, of being an apologist for Donald Trump for simply stating a fact. Democrats play this trick where they point to Donald Trump's jobs record and how it's so terrible, but they don't take into account something that he had no control over, which was the global pandemic, which of course led to shutdowns. Shutdowns that the Democratic Party was fully in favor of and wanted to keep in place longer than Republicans did, right? And so uh, the unemployment rate fell from 4.7% shortly after Trump's election to 3.5% by the end 
of 2019, so before, before the pandemic took place. And that was actually below the Federal Reserve's expectations of about 4.5%. So the Federal Reserve was expecting the unemployment rate to be 4.5%, but Trump, during Trump's term, unemployment rate went down to 3.5% just before the global pandemic led to the shutdowns. Yeah, so technically Trump lost 5 million jobs in his term, okay? So I don't actually begrudge Nancy Pelosi for making that point. She's a partisan, she's the one of the leaders of the Democratic Party. She's making a point against Donald Trump. No, and that and technically it's true. No problem. The part that I object to is her then calling Katie Turr an apologist for Trump for pointing out reality. For doing her job. For doing her job. And really MSNBC our apologists for Donald Trump. That's so ridiculous. Okay, I mean, have you watched one minute of MSNBC? Because he had a 3.5% unemployment rate, which is pretty good before the pandemic. Did he screw up the pandemic? I think he did, right? But any president would have lost a ton of jobs because of the pandemic. So it's true that Joe Biden has a better unemployment rate than Donald Trump pre pandemic. So give, and you've seen me criticize Biden a million times, but give Biden credit for that. But you gotta be fair. You have, does anyone in new, like it look. When you lie to people and when you mislead them and pretend as though all of those job losses were Donald Trump's fault when it wasn't his fault. It was again, a global pandemic and the right thing to do. I mean, it's debatable how long it should have occurred, but the right thing to do at the time was to shut businesses down because we didn't know what the pandemic was gonna mean. We didn't know how it was spreading. We didn't know how many people were gonna die. That was what was supposed to happen. That was the right course of action for a limited amount of time. And again, the amount of time can be debated, but the fact that she's being misleading, you think Americans aren't aware of that? When they see those kinds of lies, then they lose trust overall in the party that that representative is representing, and that's the Democratic Party. They don't realize that. They think Americans are idiots. We're not idiots. But fair enough, if you're a skeptical conservative, and I think you should be about her ideological transformation. And by the way, I'm not saying by any means she's some type of conservative now. I'm just, again, observing. I find it interesting. I mean, after all, Nancy Pelosi was being incredibly ridiculous. Maybe the Young Turks just chose to take off the partisan goggles. Hey, they claim to be anti corporate media, so. They have no problem talking about MSNBC or their content either. So, you know, maybe that's just something we are making way too big of a deal out of. I once again say fair enough. But now we get into some other stuff that Anna Kasparian has said recently. Let's turn up the temperature here slightly. Here was her recently talking about the crazy bail reform policies in New York and how insane it is to be letting these violent criminals out of jail. And it gets a little more spicy, I guess you could say, than that, because Anna Kasparian here, even at one point, suggests that she will be disowning the left or, you know, she does not want to be a part of the movement anymore. Like when Joy Behar outlined that case, I was like, she's crazy. This isn't a thing. This isn't real. This isn't real. So I looked it up. It's real, guys. It's real. Listen, if being on the left means supporting this, then I'm not on the left and I'm okay with that. So let me give you the details of the case. It doesn't mean that. Okay, I don't know. Let me Joy give you the Behar's details. On the left. We're all on the left. We don't want people dismembering folks getting released. Only a couple some of do. lunatic some act do. Some no, do. I know. I was going to what I was in the middle of saying is only a couple of lunatic activists yeah. are like, yeah, we're pro dismemberment guys being let go. Okay, whatever. These you don't represent the left at all. Bo dismembered at all. bodies. It's so unfair to put them in prison. Okay, let me, guys, like what? Okay, so did further research because I just couldn't believe it. Here's more. With 2019 state reforms, mutilation and disposal of murdered corpses are among crimes that are no longer bail eligible. The DA said the four went to barbaric lengths to cover the crime. What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing, Jank? What are we doing? What are we doing? Someone tell me what the F are we doing? Yeah, look. No one signed up for this. I don't know how the hell any of these laws passed. Yeah, come like, at me, come at me right now and tell me I'm the bad guy because I want these people who dismembered corpses and tried to conceal the evidence in prison. Come at me and tell me I'm the bad guy. Come at me. I don't I, look. I don't look, guys. Insane. What I, 
insane. You guys are insane. Anyone who thinks this is okay is insane. And everyone else in New York has to suffer the consequences of this. You're taking good people that would normally be on the left and drive them to and driving them to the right wing Damn with right this they are. madness. And no one agreed to it. I don't mean the voters, I mean on the left. When did we have a vote? When did we decide in a primary or a ballot measure that we should do any of this? I never once heard it at any progressive get together, any progressive, no one has ever proposed this. All of a sudden in 2019, these activists popped up in all these cities and they're like, okay, you know what? Like, How did they succeed? I wanna know. They got massive funding. How? So how Where the hell crime? did the money come from? The left doesn't have money for anything. It's and all really of a sudden, weird. that infinite yeah. money to, to finance lunatic activists who are saying, "Oh, let all the criminals go. Are you insane? But who cares about the freedom or the safety or the lives of the law abiding citizens in New York, right? Who cares about their freedom? Who cares about their safety? We have to be super concerned and have our bleeding hearts bleed out on behalf of people who smear crap on the faces of innocent people at the subway. Of course! Notice how, of course, Cenk Uyghur is there trying to talk Anna off the ledge saying, no, 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 you're still a leftist, trust, you're still with us, okay? And to a fair degree, again, perhaps she is, but listen. Bill Maher is not saying things like that, because I think this is very often going to be compared as Anna Kasparian versus Bill Maher. Both of them at the moment seem to be disaffected liberals. And if I were to really analyze it, I think very often in the case of Bill Maher, yes, as much as he will call out the left or claim he's anti-woke, in many ways, it's just a giant struggle session or therapy session for him. He's very old and stuck in his ways, right? He has convinced himself that he is is a liberal, he is a Democrat, et cetera, et cetera. But also old people, what do they very often do? They sit on the rocking chair and they complain about change. Things ain't the way they used to be. And in some way, I'd argue that's what Bill Maher is stuck in right now. He just wants to constantly vent that. And that's sort of the, the source of his frustration, I think you could say with the left. However, I think Anna Kasparian is maybe a little more intelligent, a little more open-minded. Younger, obviously, right? When you're younger, you're more likely to change ideas, change attitudes, etc., than someone like Bill is. And, you know, part of the reason I say that, besides just watching the content, hearing the way she thinks through things and researches things versus the way Bill kind of just yaps, okay? He just talks constantly, you know? Um, check out this recent segment where Anna Kasparian defends Scandinavian immigration law. And you may be saying, Vince, who cares about Scandinavian immigration law? What does that have to do with her becoming more conservative? Why? Because I would argue in this clip right here, this is not an example anymore of Anna just calling out common sense, right? Obviously, Nancy Pelosi being ridiculous in that particular interview is common sense. But talking about something like birth rates, cultural and social cohesion and general national stability in regards to immigration... Specifically to not just illegal immigration, because outside of a few radical activists, everyone agrees that, yeah, illegal immigration is bad. But even a lot of conservatives uh, feel uncomfortable when they have this discussion over legal immigration systems and truly how many even legal immigrants should a nation allow. And, you know, can legal immigration also damage the social fabric of a country? Again, that's a take I would say is actually pretty conservative. It is a substantive political belief. It is not just a mere reaction to the woke going too far or something. And uh, take a listen to what Anna Kasparian had to say about Scandinavian immigration policy. Something that I'm sure people are either gonna misinterpret or they're not gonna like it even if they interpret it correctly, but I'm gonna say it anyway. So look, I, I've done research into what the immigration laws are in Scandinavian countries because Scandinavian countries look lit, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so there have been times in my life where I'm like, Maybe I do what I need to do and enter a, a, a Scandinavian country, become a citizen. You know, Obviously, I'm not gonna do that. But part of the reason why I'm not gonna do that is because their immigration laws are super strict. And you wanna know why they're super strict, Jank? Because they have a robust social safety net that is paid for by the citizens. They pay a lot in taxes in order to have that yeah. social safety net. And so when you know immigrants come in and they haven't paid into that system, they see that as unfair, which is why they're very restrictive with immigration. 
Yeah, I, I get it. And guys, there's a legitimate reason to be uh, you know, wary of the level of immigration that we allow and an illegitimate reason and oftentimes. See, I don't know about you guys. I'm sure I will get some people who say I'm just vastly overblowing the importance of that clip. But to me personally, I actually think that is proof that something deeper is going on with her. And that's part of why I say I think she's actually becoming a little bit more conservative in her beliefs as compared to Bill, who's just a yapping old man. Because that is her defending what is, for the most part in Scandinavia, a restrictive homogenous immigration system. I mean, are we really to stand here and say, oh, that's just her criticizing the woke going too far as well? No, no, I, I don't think so at all. I think actually what she said, even if she was maybe coming from it from a left wing perspective, because she's talking about social programs at its core, that's a pretty, you know, at least by modern standards, even out there, more conservative take she acknowledges it. She knows it. She also talks about declining birth rates in that very segment and talks about how, you know, that relates to societies having problems and all this stuff. Folks, something's going on there, I think, with Anna Kasparian is all I'm saying. And look, I'm not here to make any final predictions about where Anna Kasparian ideologically ends up in the next five years. That is hard to tell. You know, I don't even think she necessarily knows the answer to that. It is perfectly possible that she may have certain flirtations like that very moment with conservative instincts, but at the end of the day, stays in the current place where she is. But perhaps in the event that she doesn't, hey, again, that'd be very interesting to see. I actually think she's a lot more intelligent than some people give her credit for. So maybe again, who knows? We'll see. And again, even if she doesn't, I still think it is sometimes good to have you know, your little operatives on the other side, you know, the, the people on the left who maybe start to ask certain questions that even if they never come to the right, their viewers may hey, say, hey, maybe that's a point and then drift over to the right. Like, hey, after all, it would be better if she's sort of center left or more in the middle than being very far on the left considering her influence, right? Do you want to create more far leftists or do you want to maybe push back towards the right wing direction a little bit? So, you know, either way, uh, I think it's beneficial to us. But yeah, we'll just have to see. With that said, folks, let me know your thoughts on some of Anna Kasparian's recent comments down in the uh, comment section down below. You know, you certainly have seen that she's getting a lot of criticism from leftists about this. What do you think her response is going to be? You know, read some of those comments sections. Do you think her, her end response will be to cave to the left in ultimatum? Or do you think it will be she actually doubles down and even gets more aggressive about this stuff? Who knows? We'll have to find out. But yeah, let me know. Be sure to leave a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And until next time, alpha moves only. God bless. Have a very great rest of your day and peace.